Okay, this may be an interesting one, but I just want to let you guys know that I appreciate you and I love you. Thank you so much for your support. The year is coming to an end, but don't wait till New Year, okay? If you got something that you want to do, do it now. Don't wait till January 1st. Do it now. Do it today. All right, just get it out the way. Just start something. Do something different. And today, this video may be a bit different because I'm giving you guys my honest thoughts on One Piece Chapter 1036, some things that transpired, essentially, the Straw Hats and what I think of them, but also, I'm looking at the other side because I've been seeing a lot more of these comments where people are talking about just how they're not really happy with what's going on so it's kind of a two-parter for me i'm ready to acknowledge it i'm ready to acknowledge the fact that the straw hats specifically the monster trio i mean the entirety of the straw hats but the monster trio for sure they're at a place where i didn't think they would reach just yet this is a yonko's crew i don't know how many times i can say that but it feels a bit different now okay before they defeated the commander i'm sure they convinced a lot of people to subscribe to this channel drop a like turn on post notifications you know how youtube is do all that good stuff so you can stay updated and let's get on with the video seriously though i do think before they defeated the commander you felt like they were getting there but you wanted to see it there have been some complaints where people are talking about the fights and how queen versus sanji went versus how king versus zoro went and i think genuinely overall people are a bit disappointed in both characters king and queen and you felt a bit empty wanting more from the characters i think for queen combat wise you wanted a bit more and for king believe it or not not, based on the flashbacks we've gotten i think it may have been a missed opportunity in regards to character king for the most of onigashimo most of wano has had ellipses dots every time he's spoken right he has been the strong silent type but i feel like with a character like that he has a lot to say there's a lot he's been through there's a lot of things that we would love to know about him but he's been the strong silent type and i get it that's his character that's how he is that's how oda has portrayed him but man there's so much depth that could have been explored there that we really didn't get to see again the flashback with king talking about kaido talking to kaido about remaining strong and that he doesn't care about legends anymore Hey, how did you transition to that? Because you were the person who, for the most part, was excited about Kaido changing the world. That's why you initially followed him. Of course, you owe him your life, but you followed him because you believed he could change the world. Now, things have kind of shifted where you're like, eh, I don't care about that as much anymore, which, you know, is a bit disturbing because have you given up on your dreams? Things like that. However, that's not the point of this video. They've arrived. As the story has progressed, I've always had in my mind this trajectory and this growth pattern for the straw hats and how i felt like they should grow based on arc based on opponent and i think the misconception that even i had was that this crew has to match in some way the yonko crews no this crew has to surpass that they have a lot more riding on their shoulders than the average yonko crew because they're not just trying to become a yonko's crew they're trying to make luffy the pirate king and then in a way that's just the first step he becomes the pirate king then there's a slew of things we expect him to be able to do or have to do based on what roger left behind more than likely luffy's the man roger's been waiting for what does that mean well there's so many theories out there some people genuinely still think roger is alive roger is just there eating Cheetos, feed up with some Mountain Dew, just waiting there. Rayleigh goes there every two weeks. Douglas Bullet is up there. You know, that's where Shanks hides out. That's where he gets all his information. Over there, Roger is still alive somewhere. I don't know. I'm inclined to disagree. Yeah, I don't think he's alive, but I do think there's a part of him that is alive that will never die, and that's his will. The will of D. It continues. It will live on, and Luffy is the kid that will fulfill that prophecy. Ooh, prophecy, people. Just shuddered. Like, why, why are you talking about prophecy in One Piece? We, we don't do that here. I just got to say that there's so many things that had to line up for luffy to get here and even as the story progresses the people that will be needed to accomplish whatever he needs to accomplish they were all necessary and had to be there at the same exact time for all these things to happen essentially wano it's a culmination of that way of thinking the sovereigns being born even the straw hats coming together the scabbers the 20 years all these things had to fall into place and they were waiting for someone joy boy to open up wano joy boy is here luffy is joy boy now his battle with kaido it does feel like a battle for joy Joy Boy, a battle for supremacy. I don't think it'll be as dissected as Luffy versus Katakuri because there's so many underlying things going on, especially with Katakuri. But I do think in hindsight, we're going to look back and say, okay, this was a battle in regards to who is fitting, maybe in Kaido's mind to be joy boy and for kaido someone did present the theory that what if kaido after he finds out that luffy is indeed joy boy decides to help luffy fight against the world government because that would fulfill king's dream and also his dream in a way but he will be living vicariously through luffy it's not crazy but again it's 
crazy because man seeing kaido on the side of the straw hats fighting against the world government the world government they're the bad guys they're the people you got to take down but what i gotta talk about again it's not that i keep just running off on these tangents because there's so much going on and i love it so much the reaction to certain things again this is not the majority but it's a loud minority of people that are talking about this and that's the straw hats of growth okay so i've talked about this right and from time to time i power scale and i do it for fun for the most part i try not to take it as seriously because the story is a story and as i've said before one piece in regards to power scaling is specifically plot driven yes power scaling is very important because the suspension of disbelief that's something that's really important when it comes to storytelling for the viewer you never want to feel like something is taking you out of the story you never want to feel like something doesn't really make sense power scaling is essentially threat level right building growth and as the straw hats go from island to island power scaling and balancing that is important because you want to maintain that threat level you want to feel like they're building up to something that's why the yonko they've been portrayed as so powerful and strong because the straw hats they're building to that if power scaling didn't exist then for the most part what is the threat what do we have to be scared of if they can just overpower everyone they come into contact with and that's what people are feeling a bit but the straw hats and how many power-ups they've gotten already in wano i just gotta say this power scaling in regards to battle shonen or even in general is essential for plot and tension purposes even with something like death note power scaling is a weird way to put this but l and how he was portrayed was set up to give light a test because if he wasn't portrayed that way the back and forth would not be as significant so power scaling is a result of portrayal tension and expectation for kaido the first time you met him in 795 he was the strongest creature in the world we felt like luffy had to grow and build up to that there's a reason why luffy lost badly the first time they met there's no way power scaling should ever be the end all be all for a story because then you get fairy tale no you get you get you get seven deadly sins no okay let me stop let me stop taking shots you just get bad things i was gonna say dragon ball z but people really love dragon ball so i'm not gonna attack dragon ball and dragon ball has a lot more than just power scaling stuff but you catch my drift it does take you out a bit and what i'm seeing more of again this is not the majority just the loud minority hey does anyone else have a problem with luffy and the straw hats growth so far so i understand what they're saying the straw hats growth has been astronomical specifically the monster trio robin we've been waiting for a long time she could have had this in her bag for a while she just never had the opportunity to use this everyone else they have done exactly what we've expected of them jimbei that's how strong we figured he was nami did her thing usopp really hasn't had his moment yet but let's get to the monster trio really quickly some people have an issue with luffy going from basically a tag team with him in law for doflamingo then essentially falling out of gear fourth then overcoming dofi then going to katakuri to whole cake island struggling with cracker needing nami's help and trees and viver cards eventually after hours and hours of fighting overcoming cracker then going to katakuri needing the merienda needing katakuri to allow him to go to gear fourth barely overcoming him some say katakuri won then going getting bodied by kaido going to udon training and now luffy is yonko caliber yeah it feels really rapid because it's been what a month since katakuri if that but i just gotta say for luffy a lot of the issue did come down to control and that's essentially what udon was about i agree some of it does seem a bit rapid and i think that's why you shouldn't really focus too much on power scaling in regards to enjoyment for the story because it could really affect you some people look at luffy fighting kaido in base form now after being throttled earlier in the arc and just the straw hats they get stronger every arc luffy has gotten several power-ups ever since katakuri now going to gear fourth is a bit easier for him he has future sight he's unlocked rio again rio is the advanced hockey from wano of course that's that's what they call hockey but the flow he a girl's version Rayleigh's version and now he's unlocked conquerors hockey coding there are a lot of things that he's learned in wano that seems rapid in succession which if you focus on those things it could definitely affect you because there was a point in time where i did that not in wano mostly in whole cake island post whole cake island because things felt a bit too convenient so this video is kind of honestly praising where the straw hats have come and how far they've come because i do feel like post wano they have to be acknowledged a bit differently the new episode that's are gonna go crazy okay you guys can let me know what you think the new epithets will be i probably have a video on that maybe this week or next week but they're gonna be amazing king of hell wait something i forgot to say <laughs> there will be spoilers in this video one piece chapter 1036 okay so if you've made it this far there will be spoilers because again zora now saying i'll become the king of hell if i need to that spurs some thinking in my head where it's like okay now we need a new epithet now he's embracing this devil this demon within ifrit jambe and then luffy he will always be straw hat luffy however how he will be viewed will be considerably different post wano 
because the change isn't just coming in regards to power. Influence will be different in regards to this kid. So the point is though, do you have a problem with the Straw Hats growth? That's the question I want you guys to answer in the comment section. As you've gone through Wano, as you've gone through post time skip for the most part, do you feel like the growth has been astronomical? Do you feel like it's been somewhat unbelievable? I'm gonna tell you guys what I think the issue is. Just honestly, I think the problem is the outcome did not satisfy the buildup and the weight. We've waited for this moment for a long time. And so when you present it in the way that it has been, where for the most part, the Sanji and King fight, it was choppy because he was going back and forth, different scenes, different chapters, different weeks, breaks in between. So the fights felt a bit choppy. I've made a video on Sanji versus Queen, the full fight compiled, link in the description down below where you can look at the full fight and see how it feels a bit better. Zoro versus King, that is coming, but also so that's not as bad, but it is still choppy and the outcome is still somewhat satisfying, more satisfying for Zoro vs. King. For Sanji vs. Queen, I think I'm satisfied as a Sanji fan, but not as a fan of combat or just fights in general. It was somewhat of a lackluster fight, and so the build-up to fighting a Yonko and a commander, especially for Sanji and Zoro, the outcome wasn't as satisfying. I was satisfied for Sanji's character, but outside of that, the outcome didn't feel like we overcame something enormous. For Zoro, it felt more so, but even that felt rapid because for a time, Zoro couldn't figure out King's ability. Zoro needed to know more about King to defeat him. Then the next chapter we see it, for the most part, it was over. And for Zoro, it's a bit more of a struggle, but man, would I say I was completely satisfied? No. But One Piece has not ever been the show where the fights are what I turn to, but it has been the manga and the series where the outcomes, they've been for the most part, satisfying. Some may look to whole cake and Sanji baking the cake for Big Mom and how she went down being not as satisfying, but it was fine for me. I think we have to wait and see how Luffy versus Kaido goes. Some do look at Luffy's growth and say, well, it's already not going to be as great because Luffy from where he's come, it seems a bit rapid. It seems a bit stretched. <laughs> But it all depends on how you look at the story. How I used to look at the story, I would be a bit perturbed because it'd be like, wow, Luffy went from basically having no chance against Kaido to now fighting him in his base form. So once he goes to gear fourth or gear fifth or uses awakening, Kaido is essentially getting demolished. So something somebody was asking is once Luffy wins, is he now the strongest on land? He can't do shit in the water. Is he now the strongest on land? And in the air, I can't think of anyone that would beat him. Is he now the strongest? Would we acknowledge Luffy as the strongest man, strongest creature if he beats Kaido. Personally, no, because I think there've been a lot of things that's happened and Kaido's fought everyone in Wano. If Luffy gets strong enough to the point that he's using gear forth with Red Rock and Ryo and Future Side and Conqueror's Hockey coding, and it pretty much demolishes Kaido without any pushback, I'm gonna be inclined to think Luffy's stronger now because it would be like the Sanji and Queen fight. Sanji finished Queen with a combo, a barrage of blows, and Queen did not come back one time after Sanji got his power up. If Luffy uses a new gear and demolishes is Kaido without any comeback, it's gonna feel a bit lackluster. For Katakuri, the reason why a lot of people do give him his props is because after Luffy went Snake Man, Katakuri still caught him and slammed him into the ground. And people felt like even after that, Katakuri could have gotten up and done some more to Luffy after he fell into that big hole. So coming back after a large attack is important. And again, I'm loving Wano. There are a lot of things that I do chalk it up to One Piece being One Piece, but for the most part, that comes from reading different things. For me, that was Berserk. I got a lot of my satisfaction and things that I wanted in One Piece from Berserk because I was expecting One Piece to be Berserk. And One Piece is not going to be Berserk. One Piece is going to be One Piece, right? So for me, it's a result of expectation. I want One Piece and I read One Piece for One Piece. And so when things happen that aren't necessarily in my line of thinking, I'm not as disappointed because I expect One Piece to be One Piece. Some may say, well, that's just you lowering expectations, but I'm not necessarily doing that. I've just been reading One Piece for a while now and I know how things work. That's why I'm not mad when characters come back to life or just don't die. <laughs> What have you been reading? And this isn't to down people that aren't enjoying certain things because you're allowed to like and dislike whatever you want. But I think we should be cognizant of the people around you and people in the comment section and just word things in a way that isn't as visceral or toxic or violent. Why choose violence in this way? Long story short, you can't really please everyone, right? Because Oda hasn't pleased me in everything that he does in the story. But for the most part, I'm entertained. I enjoy what's happening. Of course, I've voiced my concerns with the fights and how they're a bit choppy and short and somewhat unsatisfying, but I'm excited, man. 
I can't wait for next chapter. CP0. I want to see Luffy versus Kaido. We've been waiting for this for years, at least five, because the buildup has happened even outside the story from Oda's editors, right? So I just wanted to get that off my chest, guys. Enjoy One Piece the way you want to. Personally, I think the story is still very good, and I can't wait for One Piece chapter 1037. I am ecstatic. I'm excited. Enjoy what you want to enjoy. That's all I can say. But if you have concerns, I respect those too. But guys, give me thoughts. Again, do you think the Straw Hats and their growth has been too rapid? Are you satisfied with the outcome of certain fights and interactions? Give me your thoughts. Make sure to like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BragoD.Ace. Let's talk. Let's chat it up. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys all so much. Again, guys, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Okay, I start doubting me, I felt lost. I